Hello out there. I had some questions about the chain rule in regards to differentiation, so I thought I'd take a little bit of time here and kind of review a little bit about uh, differentiation with the chain rule and look at a couple of examples. So first, uh, remember that when we're differentiating a composite function, that's where the chain rule comes into play. So here we're looking at the derivative of f of u of x, and the chain rule states that we take the derivative of the f of u function, the outer function, with respect to u, and then multiply that times the derivative with respect to x of u of x. You can think of this a couple of ways. You can think of that as df du, du dx, and of course visually that looks like the du's cancel out, so the process gives you df dx, which is what we want. Another way to think of that is it's f prime of u times u prime of x. Now, one way to think of it is to think of it as we're looking at the outer function. We work our way from the outside in. We take the derivative of the outer function, whatever operation that is, with respect to that quantity, whatever that expression is, that variable. And then we take and multiply times the derivative of the inner function, kind of using the, and that's how the chain rule works. And, and if you have several tiers of that, you go outer of the first outer, then the next outer, then the derivative of what's inside until you get down to just the derivative of something involving the variable only. Okay? So let's consider an example. Here we have a prime example of a composite function. f of x is equal to x cubed plus 5x, all that raised to the fifth power. So you first spot this as a composite function because you have one expression inside of another operation. The fact that we have the polynomial x cubed plus 5x inside of the fifth power operation. So we define that as our u. And of course, then f will be f of, replace that stuff with u, and that's your f function. f of u to the fifth. Now by the chain rule, we're going to do f prime of u times u prime of x. Um, f of u is a power function, u to the fifth, so we just do its derivative, get 5u to the fourth, and then we do the derivative of u, uh, which would be the derivative of that polynomial x cubed plus 5x. In this case, we get 3x squared plus 5. So at this point, we can multiply the 5 through. That gives me 15x squared plus 25 and at this point I have u to the fourth but I want to write my answer for as f prime of x so at this point I go ahead and say okay um, that would be was u to the fourth but u is equal to x cubed plus 5x so I replace the u with the x cubed plus 5x and that's raised to the fourth power Okay. So that's our first example, and then oftentimes, though, what we find ourselves doing is we have, uh, we need to use the chain rule as part of some product or quotient, and that's what this example looks at. We have the function 3x over x squared plus 4 to the third, so we have a fraction, which is going to require us to use the quotient rule, uh, but first... Um, and using that quotient rule, we're going to need to deal with the derivative of that denominator, that x cubed plus 4 to the third. So I'm going to focus on that part first. As I look at that, I see that I have the x squared plus 4, that polynomial, inside of the cubing operation. So I set that to be my u. And of course, if I replace that with u, then I have u cubed, so f is equal to u cubed. And then we invoke the chain rule f prime of u times u prime of x. f prime of u, well u, f is u to the third, so that would be 3 u squared by the power rule. And then we differentiate the inside. Derivative of x squared plus 4 is 2x. We can put the 2 and 3 together to get 6. So that would give us 6x. And then times u squared. But u again is x squared plus 4. So we write that as x squared plus 4 squared. Okay. Now at this point, we're now ready to go back to our f function. 
So it's 3x over that quantity raised to the third power. So we invoke our quotient rule. F prime will be the top, or bottom, sorry, x squared plus 4 to the third times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. All that's going to be over the bottom function squared. Well, since that stuff's being raised to the third power, when we square it, we get that stuff to the sixth power. And at this point, we go in and we start plugging in what we know. We're going to have to differentiate 3x, so that's pretty easy. That's just going to be 3. And then we've already done all the work to differentiate that x squared plus 4 to the third. That's our circle result up there in red. So just plugging that information in. So minus 3. So we have x squared plus 4 to the third times 3. Uh, minus 3, sorry. Times 3 minus 18x squared. How did I get 18x squared? Well, that was 3x times 6x. That's where the 18x squared came from. And then times x squared plus 4 to the second power, which was what was left over in our derivative up here. Okay. All right. Now, at this point, uh, we just need to start simplifying. Uh, so we factor out a common factor, and the common factor that we're really interested in here is the fact that, that quantity, x squared plus 4, uh, shows up in each term. So we take the x squared plus 4 to the second power. And we're going to factor that out. Now when we do, on the first term we had x squared plus 4 to the third. We took two of them out, so there's going to be one left. So we'd have 3 times x squared plus 4. And then in the second term, we took out the whole x squared plus 4 squared. So we left with just minus 18x squared. And then that's all over that bottom function squared, or, or sorry, bottom function to the sixth power. And at this point, we can now do some simplifying. We have an x squared plus 4 to the sixth in the bottom, and x squared plus 4 squared in the top, so we can take two of those away from each. That would leave me with just an x squared plus 4 to the fourth power left in the bottom. And now we just need to simplify what's inside the top there. 3 times x squared plus 4. Well, 3 times x squared will be 3x squared, and then minus 18x squared will give me a negative 15x squared, and 3 times 4 would give me 12. So we get the result negative 15x squared plus 12 all over x squared plus 4 to the fourth power. And one thing you can usually see uh, to kind of confirm that at least you're on the right track here is looking at the exponent that you finished with there in comparison to what you started with. We start it with a minus third power in the bottom. Of course, an x to the minus third, when you do its derivative, would become an x to the minus fourth. So, generally speaking, that is something that will happen. It went from three, minus three down to minus four, because when you do derivatives, you, the exponent drops. Of course, we have some other stuff because uh, of the chain rule and the fact that it's a quotient. Hopefully, this helps you out as you try to tackle and remember how to do problems dealing with uh, the chain rule and differentiation.